Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. Are you shocked that your offer was turned down? Well, today we're discussing the reality of the current hiring landscape. Spoiler alert, it's ultra competitive and uh, it's a candidate and employees market. So we're going to teach you ways in which you can capitalize on the current market conditions and have your offers accepted. Ooh, I love this. <laughs> Today's quote, you can design, cre create, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make that dream a reality. Any idea who said that, Miss Kathy Dawson? Sounds like Walt Disney to me. Super smart. I have the <laughs> smartest guests ever. They all know the answers. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to provide proven tactical solutions to solve your company's most difficult hiring challenges. We share insights from top performing entrepreneurs and industry experts like our guest today, Miss Kathy Dawson, who's the CEO of Dawson & Dawson, Inc., Kathy is the firm's nonprofit liaison. She's also a great chair dancer <laughs> and oversees the executive you know? and retained search, temporary and contract staffing business development practices of the firm. What sets Kathy apart is an innate ability to develop long-term growth-oriented strategies and to make lasting placements as if it was her own firm. She's a well-known speaker, trainer in the industry, as well as a highly sought-after talent acquisition expert, which makes her a fantastic <laughs> guest for today. Boy, I had a couple of typos in there. My bad. So, Kathy, <laughs> welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thank you, Rick. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So, here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the current talent landscape. Mm -hmm. Then, we're going to tell you where your company is screwing up. <laughs> Why all these great hires? And we're going to teach you how to take advantage of the current market to land great people. So let's dive right in. What is the current landscape? Let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> well, let's see. What is the unemployment rate right now? I think most of us know that it's lower than it's been in 17 years. Right. 3.9, 2.9 in Orange County, so 3.9 nationwide. And so they say 3% of that is unemployable. So that's the landscape today. So we have 0.9% of the people that are actually employable. That's exactly right. So that's wow. not a very good number mm. for our employers. No, it's not a very good number at all. <laughs> so you have a 0.9% chance of finding a person through your own means. Yes. The other part of that... Or in Orange is County, you have like a minus... Point at one, right? <laughs> That's true. Very true. Yeah. The other part of the landscape is that 51% of the people that are currently employed, guess where they, what they're doing? They're looking for jobs. Yes, on yes. our dime as employers. Yep. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk about engagement quite a bit, exactly. employee engagement. And then what's interesting is that when I throw that statistic out, a lot of times employers are going to be like, not my company. True. No, 51% of your employees are probably looking. Yeah. yeah. I do the same thing. I'll be in a meeting and I'll say, just imagine half of the people here, whether they want to admit it or not, are actively looking at opportunities and they come their way. That's a big number. And we want to make sure we're protecting ourselves, right? <laughs> way to throw a stick into those folks there. <laughs> Look, and Mr. CEO, half your staff is looking right now. <laughs> well, It's it, probably it, higher for if you're a bad CEO. Exactly. No. I would just say, I would assume so. That's just the average. And then they say there's been 6.6 .6 million jobs and literally in the u.s they go unfilled that's a lot of jobs that go unfilled yeah so what do you think happens with that we the people that are currently working have to absorb those jobs right so it's a big challenge for companies to hire the right people and to make sure that they're um, giving themselves a fighting chance just to add on top of that 71 percent of the population is disengaged in their current roles yes indeed so you have that disparity you have another 20 percent that aren't looking but they're also not given optimal performance. Right. That's absolutely right. The Unengaged employee is taking money like stealing from us. It's the same thing as I see God, it. God, I feel like we just got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> we could have, and we will. I mean, lots of companies have that issue. Yeah, definitely. All right. So now that we know how screwed you guys are, <laughs> let's, let's talk about where you're missing the mark. I see a few things as far as why companies are having a hard time hiring. And I hear this all the time. I can't find people. True. Very true. Well, you're not looking in the right place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Agreed. So where do we look? You want me to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe you're going to give that. So where do we look everywhere is the answer to you that can question. always answer. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> I love you. I knew I would. 
<laughs> anyway, now you need to look everywhere and everywhere everybody else isn't looking. So what I usually recommend to my clients is that they take a look at where their workforce population, the most successful, the most productive are coming from. Mm-hmm. And then you try to duplicate that success. So it depends on what level you're hiring for, of course. But if you're hiring you're manufacturing workers, light industrial, you want to try to get to that workforce. Middle management, clerical, secretarial, executive search, all the same. Where do they come from? Where do they hang out? And then, you know, posting ads, doing those kinds of things are ways just to gather as much go wide versus oh. deep, right? Oh. I know it's painful. You just made me cringe. I, I, hate, I hate going wide. <laughs> I agree. Because we have two different, you know, search methodologies. I mean, I guess for the mass is when you have scale, you have exactly. to do that. But to me, that just makes sends send shivers down my spine, and <laughs> my eyes start to roll back in my head, and I start to <laughs> like drool on myself. Yes, because it's an awful lot of work that's not really necessary yeah. if you really know the quality of the candidate and where they hang out. Well, here's my point, though: if we're at two point nine percent unemployment rate, what are you getting off job boards or off postings? You're not. That's exactly right. So you're better <laughs> off investing that money into somebody to actually do that work, to go out and engage people. Absolutely. Well, to say nothing of what your real job is, right? No. So a lot of times we engage with HR executives and they're just so happy to have us because they have so much else to do. Oh, yeah. And literally they're rated uh, good or bad if they hire the right people, but they aren't given enough time to do it. So, you know, as being a recruiter for so many years, it takes a lot of time. It takes at least a week just to figure it out. A hundred percent. That's 40 hours. So when are they and doing God their other job? And God forbid they change the spec halfway Oh, through. yeah. Well, that, that never happens. That happens all the time. That that never happens. <laughs> Another joke. <laughs> That's an inside joke in case you guys didn't know that Very one. much so. That happens, happens like 90% <laughs> of the time. So true. Yeah. So yeah, so, so it's a problem because they're tasked with a job they really don't have time to do. And they know that they're being rated on that. So to do a, have a partnership like us mm-hmm. is something that they really look forward to. Because not only do we look for what they need, but we keep them in our minds at all times because they're our clients. So they like that relationship. They like us digging deep and like us always having candidates ready at the helm when we know what they're looking for. So um, so finding people and finding out where to find them from is a, a mystery into all of itself. But the reality is taking successful, proven track record people in your own organization that have really succeeded is really the best way to backscale that. Well, and also uh, use, utilize your referral network. I mean, every person yes. that you have that's working for the company that should have two to three other people. Right. And here's the thing. It's really important to look outside of the actual skills and look for transferable skills. Oh, yes. Because in this this market, that's how you're going to get the right person. Absolutely. And there's a lot of people that are in your organization that are in the, their butts are in the wrong seat. Exactly. So yeah. get them in the right seat or replace them. Yeah. So bringing people in from the outside to do that is what is more normal these days than it used to be. Yeah. As you know, I've been doing this for 36 years. So back in the days when there weren't any computers is when I started. You got me beat by like 10 years. <laughs> is that it? We Darn. <laughs> we didn't have them either. Well, actually, I had like a Windows 95. Oh, machine or lucky like, you. I, you but actually it took had me a like, keyboard. Wow. It took me like four years to get it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember when our reception was the only one in our company that had a computer. Oh, it was God. crazy. But technology has advanced a lot of things, but it's also made some recruiters very lazy. Oh, yeah. And so what happens is they post ads, think they're going to get the hire, and it doesn't work. So that's the challenge. Where are we missing the mark? We are missing the mark on the candidate process and flow, in my opinion. So okay. most of my companies, I would say 90%, do not have a structure in place that I think is going to help them get through this tight marketplace. So what I mean by that is, again, the running the ads, you know, onboarding people. I went to visit a company, credit union company, very large, and they were uh, not onboarding their people in the right manner. They probably onboarded 10 people a month. They went to 50 a week. And the way they did that... That was by not doing skill assessments before they interviewed the candidate. So it was a really quick fix, but it was something that they couldn't see from the outside or from the inside. They need to see it from the outside. So the process. Yeah, that just creates a lot of management problems. The process you know, that you do you has need to, to hire be. hire hard and manage easy. And innovate. Be yeah. innovative. Don't stick with old processes. Like if you say, why are you doing this? And they say, because we've always done it. You know, you're in the wrong place. Right. So you have to figure that out and you have to help manage through that. So a lot of times this VP of HR or this hiring manager doesn't have the authority to change process. It's got got to go to the CEO. So this is what had to happen. It took them two months to get that approved. And now they're hiring 50 a week. It's amazing. 
So, so that's a good thing. They're making good hires. It's a very, years? yeah, very okay. good thing because now they're making great hires. So they just changed one of their processes to make sure that they were doing the best they could for their company. Well, skills assessments, in my opinion, are are okay, but you don't want to base your whole decision on that. That is correct. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. They don't also assess transferable skills. Exactly. That's where you have to start thinking about who this person is and what it's about. That's right. All right. So if you're just joining us on the live stream or the podcast, you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard. And today our guest is Kathy Dawson, the CEO of Dawson and Dawson Inc. I know, right? (laughs) This is a hip place, man. (laughs) (laughs) We're talking about the current hiring landscape and where companies are missing the mark. And now we're going to talk about how we can take advantage of this this disparity and dramatically improve your hiring process. Mm -hmm. So... If you're missing the mark and people are turning down your offers and you're surprised, <laughs> I did the Home Alone face. Should we do that together? Yeah. Right now. Ready? Ah. Home Alone face? <laughs> Absolutely. I see that a lot, unfortunately. I know, right? Um, then you really need to start with your mindset. I always go back to one of my favorite episodes of Seinfeld was when George Costanza did everything the opposite of what he would normally do, and then things started working out for him. <laughs> I, if you've got a hiring process that isn't working or people are turning down, do the opposite of what you're doing. Right. I mean, it sounds silly, but it probably <laughs> is going to work much better than what you're doing. It's definitely better than what you're doing, but there's probably a better way <laughs> than that, right? Uh, so changing it up is definitely the message there. I think changing the mindset, it needs to start there. Yeah. It's not about you. This whole pro- hiring landscape, and I hear people complain about millennials and people want purpose and not, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's more than just the money these days. Mm-hmm. It's more about creating something that's going to benefit that person you're trying to hire. Mm-hmm. And if you can't connect the dots on those two things, mm-hmm. you're going to lose a hire every time. Absolutely. Because you can't, if you're a smaller company, you can't beat Amazon. Right. You can't beat the big boys who have big wallets. Right. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to beat PIMCO. Right? <laughs> How about Google? That's my big problem. <laughs> I beat they, Google gra- the- they gobble Google goggles every app. <laughs> okay. I brag. I love coming up against Google. I have beat them quite a few times nice. when I come up with them. I will teach you my Ooh, afterwards. I like it. <laughs> yes. I know how to beat Google. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. <laughs> right? Got you, Google. That's right. But All don't right. Google anything in information, though, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's talk about really what this is about. It's really not about you. It's about positioning yourself and your company for that person. You're not that special as a company. Not at all. So let's flip the script. And we just said that, but let's, let's flip the script on how we approach candidates. Why not take it from the perspective of we've got a person. Let's try and find out what's going to motivate this person before we start presenting things to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the psychology of recruiting is fascinating to me. I think that's why I'm still in the business for so long is because each recruit is so uniquely different and where they come from is different. So the way someone was raised, the way that they've been treated along their path, whatever path that is, Mm -hmm. makes a huge difference on how they respond to anybody that they exchange with day in and day out. I don't care if it's the grocery store or if it's about a job, right? Yeah. And so you sit there and you look at, okay, I must make this person be accountable to me, excited about this uh, job and really engaged. So what is it that motivates them? So often when I'm interviewing somebody, I'll say, what motivates you? I ask the question very directly and they'll tell me all kinds of business things, but really it's not about business. I think you mentioned that a little earlier. Yeah. It's about who they are. And so once I find out how bad their mother or their father treated them and how bad their last boss was and or the experiences they've had that have turned out to be negative versus positive for them, I can then figure out what they need to be successful where they're at. If they're high maintenance, low maintenance, if they are a big contributor, a lower contributor, maybe they're a research analyst, maybe they're a salesperson. These factors that make them who they are today really make a difference of their success. But going back to their current job, you need to find out what's wrong in their current job. Why they want to leave to begin with. Absolutely. And some of them don't know they want to leave. That's you true. Know, some of them, passive candidates. Yeah, a lot right. of passive, passive yeah. candidates don't know they want to leave until you have the conversation with them and then you start opening that wound. That's right. And, <laughs> exactly. and so that should be your goal of how you engage people is find out if there's an actual wound. And what I find is there's three areas where most people are dissatisfied in their current roles. The growth, there's mm-hmm. no growth mm-hmm. potential. Mm-hmm. 
the content of the work mm -hmm. or leadership. Mm -hmm. There's offshoots of things around there, but you can pretty much guess that one of those three are going to come up. Right. And then all you have to do is really explore it. And <laughs> as one of my old mentors, Peter Lefkowitz, used to say, as soon as you open that wound, just stick your finger in it <laughs> and open it up even more. Yeah. Because you know, then they're going to be highly how, motivated. See how, well, no, not necessarily that, but just see how deep that wound is. Oh, I see. Is it a scratch or is it really a wound? Oh, is it okay. something that needs to be healed or okay. are they okay with it? All right. I was thinking you'd get them to leave quicker <laughs> by reminding them of the things that they're not getting where they're at. You so, can. I mean, yes, same, that happens. That's a result of it, right? <laughs> that's that's what a, I see. I see that as being a really good technique. So. That's just a bonus. <laughs> Once you gather that information, now you know how to position your company. Exactly. Now you know how to position your role. You connect those dots between what you offer and what they need to heal, mm -hmm. and boom, mm -hmm. that's how you be Google. There you go. That's the secret. Secret sauce. We just told you a million dollar <laughs> secret. Let's see. I've got 36. You got 26. So it's a lot of years. <laughs> I don't advertise 26. Okay. You got 16. <laughs> Is that good? I'm 26. <laughs> Let's I'm, just I'm 26 change the years. years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This boils back down to engagement. I think this is the point that you brought up earlier. So let's talk about how you feel that it's best to engage. Well, I think once you find out if they're motivated to make a change, which is what you just identified and dealt with, yeah. then what you do is you find out, you know, what their motivators are. And if this new company that you're recruiting for does have that to offer, you know, I'm sure you've done many searches where you've said, you know, you're a great candidate, but you're not right for this client. Oh, yeah. And you just keep them close. And if something else comes along and or in some cases, if they're really good, I tell my clients that would need that kind of person that they even exist because yeah. they don't know they exist either. Yeah, I, I look for their vision or whatever they desire, right? Yeah. And a lot of times if you present a job to them or a company to them, they're going to tailor that toward the opportunity, yes. right? Because they, yes. they, you always want what you don't have. That's right. You know? <laughs> and once you get it, it's not so good yeah. <laughs> in yeah. some cases. But, but if they give you accurate information up front before you present your opportunity to the job, mm -hmm. then it beces a, a so truer a, fit. Right. Well, and you don't want them to be selling you. You want them to be telling you the truth. No, right? I want them to be selling me. Well, I don't want them to sell me something that I don't, that's not going to be a reality later. Oh, yeah. You I know, gotcha so them, that. you know, I'm this, I'm that for that client. You know, I've done that. I've done that. A hunter mentality that's saying a salesperson yeah. versus a gatherer. Yeah. You know, it's that, clear. I call that desperate housewife mentality. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Those are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I got nothing. <laughs> They're okay, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know the desperate housewives? Uh, well, let's just say I, I know a lot of the housewives, whether it be as desperate or not. <laughs> I was talking about the show that was on, not the Housewives of Orange County. About. Okay. I know that well. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Because I don't... I don't know the difference quite regularly. Okay, well, that's smart on your part. You're doing yeah. more more work on recruiting then. <laughs> I have useless TV that entertains me because I have too much heady stuff during the day. I like to just relax. Now, Got you it. have your daughter, so that's Yeah, I have that's an eight-year-old, and, and I haven't watched TV in probably See? eight years. Okay, I watch good. a lot of Disney films, though. I'm sure you do. Oh, my God. <laughs> Going back to all We're right. having too much fun here, just so you know. Rick's a great guy. <laughs> so how do I we get these say. candidate engaged? That's where we're at. Yeah, so let's go back to engagement. <laughs> so what you do is you follow a process. That's what we do. And we recommend that our clients do this as well. So the process, you know, you map out what's best for you. You have it. You check it. You make sure that your team of recruiters that are working with you are doing that as well. Mm -hmm. And you bring them all together. And as you're managing the actual contact, not emails, because we text and we email, we do all kinds of ways of communicating these days, right? Yeah. But what is the old-fashioned and best way always? The phone. The phone or in person. Or in person. Yes. That's exactly right. And it doesn't happen that often, as most of our people will be able to tell. So I <laughs> I believe in picking Recruiting up that phone. where we have to use a phone? <laughs> I know. It's that's very archaic. strange. <laughs> and that's what everybody else is doing, right? They're doing mass emails to 200 people, hoping somebody responds. Well, that's not going to engage that, in, that person. No. That is the start of a transactional approach. That's right. And that's what's going to end it. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So we do the opposite and we recommend our clients do the opposite. And that is they have a personal touch with that, um, with that person on an ongoing basis. And once they've identified that that candidate is a qualified candidate for their company, mm -hmm. then they get a hiring person, a higher above them, a level. Up. So you have a junior recruiter usually onboarding and trying to get candidates in. This is what you're recommending with my clients. Yeah. Okay, my clients it. do this based on a recommendation. Okay. So then they have this second person that comes in who's 
more like a junior you and I, and but they're still quite capable. And they give them the, oh, you, you've gotten this far. We're so excited. And Let me throw a spoke in the yep. wheel here real quick. I like that term for some reason today. <laughs> so what if you're a small company? Let's say you're like a four or five person company you're mm-hmm. trying to build. What's going to be the best way for them to approach it? Well, they'll have to do it themselves, of course. All right. So, so let's get, let's, take let's be that. Home Depot right now. Okay. Okay. Do it yourself. Yeah, here. exactly. So basically you're in touch with that person in the beginning and you have to qualify whether or not they're right. You already know what you're looking for. You have, I usually develop a five to a 10 page sort of box checking sort of process. And it's like, do they have this? Do they have that? Do they have this? Oh, that's old school. I know it is, All but right. old school works. You like you old school. You are old school. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing the same thing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm fighting it every step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I have a feeling that may or may not be true. But. It's not working, but I'm fighting it. <laughs> So anyway, you go through the basics and you make sure they're at least qualified. Then yeah. they go to a second level or that person takes the call again and says, all right, you've now made it to the next level. We'd like to see you in person. And you make it like they've achieved something all along the way. Because you're gamifying it. Yes. Almost. And yeah. so what's happening everywhere else is the mass email. And they're simply saying, come in if you're interested. If you're not, we don't really care about you. And, and that's the tone of their voice. If they do make a phone call, usually it's an email, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so then they come in. So here we are, small five person. They come in. You meet the person first. You have them fill out an application of some sort, something that gives you a commitment from their part. Because again, you're psychologically moving them down. Well, you have to for road. compliance anyway, right? You do, HR but if they're compliance. small, they may not. They well, should. Well, they don't mostly. Oh, and there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good point. It's point like, out. hey, you want to meet me at the uh, Cocos yeah. or a Starbucks? Hello. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> That's what I was going to say the Starbucks on MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> That's the popular place. Oh, we right. see everybody there. I know. Well, anyway, so you do that. You have them do something you know, that they have to work for. And then you bring them in. And then once you meet with them, if you think they're qualified, then you do, you're you not the sole only person interviewing. You have a group of people interview them. So you have... You should always have a group. A it should partner. never be one person. Because... Because you're getting biased information. Exactly. Yeah, and you we, want to eliminate bias. Right. And we all part. hire based on our past. Yep. We want to hire people that we he like. Reminds like, me I hire of the guy you. Bob. I would I, hire you in a heartbeat because I like you. But I don't really... <laughs> what if you don't do the job? That'd be the worst hire you ever made. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm difficult. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, the point is, is that you do want a, a collaborative approach because you may miss something. And then I never hire the first time they come. I always make them come back again, even if they've met everybody that they were supposed to meet, unless there's a flight involved or something like See, that. See, what's important is you're talking about you have a process in place. Exactly. And it needs to be regimented yes. and stuck to and yes. religiously just driven home. Yes. And all your people that are in the interview process need to be on board with it. Absolutely. And be part of it and own it. Yes. And we have, again, this criteria you called old school. Basically, if they don't, if they're not an eight out of 10, if there's 10, if there's not eight out of 10, they don't get to the next level. And it doesn't matter what high school or college or where their foot, where, what football team they like. It none of that matters. What matters is what are they qualified to do in this job, in this company. And 75% of the hiring decision, in my opinion, is based on culture. So you're checking oh, for yeah. culture here. You're saying, I do, I like to say, do the elevator test. Do you yeah. know what I mean by that? No, it's the elevator test. If the Enlighten elevator me. gets stuck, and I'm with this candidate, am I going to be okay? Because <laughs> if you don't want to be in an elevator stuck for a while with somebody, don't hire them, okay? Because the reality is you're going to have to deal with them day in and day out. And if they they don't communicate like you, they panic in a situation, they uh, start getting nervous, or maybe they don't really care about it at all. They're very kickback, you know, surfer dude kind of guy, gal, then that's a different thing too. You'll know if they're in the elevator and it gets stuck if you want to have them on your team. And I use that quite a bit because it's a real simple sort of test. Um, you know, Eating a meal with them is kind of a neat thing to do, too, especially at a higher level. Um, you know how that goes when you eat a meal. Sometimes you we eat a meal together, yes. breaking bread. I was very impressed by your behavior there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything I on your with face. My mouth closed. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom taught me great manners. Yeah, it's that daughter you're trying to prove for her right. No, actually, I'm trying to I'm trying to ruin her. You can't, no, you know, you're I, not. I want her to be completely unattractive to males. <laughs> oh my god, that's not going to happen. I'm, yeah, I'm in so in much trouble. trouble. Yeah, absolutely. My daughter's 28, and I got to tell you, uh, every day is a challenge, and it's so much fun to see them grow like that. <laughs> oh, so, and I have that. a son who's 30, and um, oh my gosh, great, great stuff. But they're millennials, so I've got my firsthand experience of. <laughs> Them. <laughs> They're millennials. <laughs> I love millennials personally. Good. But, well, that's because you know. you're a big millennial. 
I am. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to identify with everything that I'm not. <laughs> All right, we're just about out of time for uh, this week's episode of Higher Power. Kathy, thanks so much for your time investment today, and, and I want to welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Yay! Now, I'm sure that some of our listeners are going to want to use your services. How do they reach you? Yeah, everybody there. Hi. So well, how do they reach you? Um, our website, of course, Dawson Dawson Inc. IMC.com. D-A-W-S-O-N with nothing in between. D-A-W-S-O-N-I-N-C. So www.dawsondawsoninc.com. All right. Perfect. All right. I want to thank our listening audience for tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. Quick uh, thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Andrea Ballin and Shanti Ryle. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. Yes, we need your input and feedback <laughs> to make amazing content for you. So please I think continue we got to dance. So. Now we dance. Bye. Well, we're dancing in a minute here. <laughs> wow, that's like a premature dance. Well, I was thinking maybe that was happening next, but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can join the Higher Power Radio community at Higher, that's H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, radio.com. And you can find us on iTunes, iHeart, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and YouTube under Higher Power Radio. Follow me on Instagram at uh, Rick Gerard one Tune in next week. Our guest is going to be author and keynote speaker Rocky Romanella. He's the founder and senior partner of 360 Management Services, LLC. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio. 